Okay. That was that new Archer titanium-coated chain. Um, Brock was kind of kind enough to send it to me, uh, a couple loops of it to try. They don't have it in stock yet. They will have it in stock. It's going to be a little more money than a normal Archer chain, but I like it. First impression, fantastic. Those logs we was cutting there, they're just been around they're, they're dry and they're they're shrunk and they're hard and that that was mountain ash yeah, but they've been skidded so they got that grit in them you know and uh great great first impression i'll let you know when i run more once we do a pickup truck load of wood with it i'll tell you the, if if i think it's worth it i'll tell you if i think it's not i'll tell you that too but I, it has a good feel nice and smooth a great looking chain one of the first chains right out of the box that i've had in a long time that i didn't have to touch it up because as you know most chain cuts better after you sharpen it once or twice right out of the box or not it, it just if it, it feels so smooth that i know that the uh, rakers are all set exact they're the same it's good stuff real precision now this uh this old saw We've got some new parts here, and we've got stuff that you're going to hear right now that nobody knows about, about these saws, and I'll guarantee you that. The first thing is the bearings. You know you can't get that clutch side bearing for these. Until now, I'm going to share this in just a moment. Okay, this set of cases we've got a problem with. Something really bad happened to this saw, and these studs, these these are pulled out. It's been helicoiled once. I'm not going to be able to helicoil it again. It's just not going to happen. You can't put a helicoil inside a helicoil. So I'm afraid we're going to change the cases, okay? But this is an original AV. Uh, late 70s. I just call it what it is. Nice little, these run. They're heavy, but they, they run. They they really have caught a lot. People used to cut a lot of timber with them, but I personally have cut a lot of firewood with these type of saws. But you see, after running today's saws, there's room for improvement. So let's do this. Let's one-up this. Let's put some of today's technology in one of these old beasts. What do you think of that? Yeah, I like the idea, too. So, here we go. Okay. Now, there's always been a difficulty trying to find all the parts to resurrect one of these old saws. Okay, we know this. Um, I talked to Ryan at Wolf Creek. He actually doesn't have the cylinders and gaskets and stuff for... The old 45 to 56, 56 bag. He doesn't have them. Now, I've got to know Gus from Sawzilla quite good, and he's a good man, and he's helped me out on in a pinch on parts that I either didn't have or couldn't get elsewhere. And uh, this is why I really appreciate these suppliers. Ryan supplies a whole group of parts for me for a lot of saws. And it seems that Sawzilla has some carryover parts back and forth that are similar, but he gets into some of these older saws. So, Gus and Sawzill will give you these parts. Well, he don't give nothing, but I'll tell you what, you can get them from him. How's that? And, uh, okay, here is the Pro-Line stuff. It's good stuff from Gus. And there is the complete gasket set for these saws with the seals. Now, if you notice, it's even got that gas tank gasket. Okay? That's important. It really is. Okay? New impulse line for the saw. That way you don't have to try to make one fit from another saw. Like, I can tell you right now, the 66 mag, we've done that. But sometimes you got to make things fit. So let's get exactly what works. Okay? Okay? 
Sawzilla. That's the intake manifold. That's the number for it. Very similar to the 66 mag. You want to use this one, okay? And now the one thing we're not positive of is this fuel line. I think this is for 041, 048, stuff like that. But to me, it looked just like the fuel line that was in the 045s and 056. As we progress on this project, I'll let you know. Okay. Now, the, the uh, bearings, let's, let's get into that really kind of a little bit deep. You cannot get this bearing. Oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? Because it's not me anymore. This is a clutch side bearing for these 445s, 056s. Okay, now the original bearing was 17 millimeter shaft, 42 millimeter OD, 14 and a half millimeter wide. Okay. This bearing is 13 millimeter wide. Okay. And you see it's got a seal on both sides. Okay. We actually don't even need a seal on either side. But the factory had bearing had a seal only on the outside next to the, the main seal. Okay, away from the crankshaft. But this is approximately 60 thousandths narrower. It, but it fits right on the crank. It goes right in the case. It's spot on. Um, this actually came from Thunder Ridge Cycles and ATV in, in Wisconsin. Okay, it's a C3 bearing. It's a proper bearing. This, this is good stuff. So, as I build this saw, I'll show you how to handle uh, putting this in. Because what we'll actually do, we'll sweat the bearing on the crankshaft first and drop it in that side. And we're going to leave that uh, uh, 60 thousandths. We just won't set it all the way deep in. We want it to be on the shoulder of the, of the crankcase. Okay. Now, when you think, oh, gee, I don't want to run a narrower bearing, there must have been a reason. Okay, here's the deal, guys. 60203 bearing that's in the 66 mag is 12 millimeters. Another 40,000 smaller, yeah, for width. Okay, so this is why these bearings and these saws lasted so many decades. They were just a little heavier bearing. And this is going to be just fine to use. So we got that. This is the first time on YouTube anybody's even said anything about them. Because you can't just go through your bearing supply houses and find this bearing. You cannot. You have to do what I dig and dig for days and finally look at motorcycles and ATVs. This is what you do. And you will find some pretty wild little bearing setups that you think you can't get. In, in other forms of motorsports, okay? And so, isn't that a nice little trick? Yeah, you just hook, hook one part of that seal out, and away you go. Perfect. This is awesome. Now we have bearings for saws that they haven't made them for in a long time. So, I'm happy about that. Now, the the other bearing is, is available, Okay, through uh, Sawzilla. They have the flywheel side bearing. And I just had one right here. Now I can't find it. And uh, give me just a second here. Okay, here is the other bearing. And, and uh, this one is, it was a little more common. This one I just happened to find online before I even talked to Gus at Sawzilla. Uh, measures 11.92. For wet, it's 12 millimeter bearing. And it's 20 millimeter on a shaft. It'll be just a little process, what it'll be, uh, on the flywheel side. And then, obviously, 42 millimeters on the OD. This one is 41.92. Okay, so, but this is the right bearing right here. So we have two new bearings. We got seals. We got gaskets. We got all that stuff. Okay. Now, let's continue on. You're going to love this. Okay. 
I have a new wrist pin bearing right there. There's a number for it. Pro line. And I'm not sure. I think this might be the first time I've actually showed one of these Pro line cylinders. And tell me that ain't a cool sticker. I mean, come on. You got to have that for your toolbox. And uh, there's one for your chainsaw. Gus knocked that out of the park, didn't they? Okay. And to my best of my ability, from an old man's memory of what I've used to see, this is a Proline cylinder. Now, the 045 and the first 056 was a 52 millimeter bore, okay? The 056 Super, 045 Super, and that's not exactly wrote in stone. You don't know what you're going to see, but are supposed to be 54 millimeter, as well as the 56 Magnum. The Supers and the Magnum was this 54 millimeter. But don't be surprised to see anything on them. Do not be surprised. Parts mixed up because as things became obsolete way back, you might find the wrong cylinder on the right saw and vice versa. And uh, there's the piston. Now, we all know, at least I know I'm going to tell you, that with the 54 millimeter ones, you can put the 56 uh, Magnum, or I mean the 66 Magnum top end on these saws. They're exactly the same except for a few minor differences. Um, but as far as bolting on, they go right on. They have the same bolt pattern. Now, the 52 millimeter and the, this 54 millimeter, there was two different bolt patterns. Some of them you could make fit by elongating holes, and some you couldn't. You just had to get a different set of cases. And we might run into that as we go, and I'll share with you what I do about it. And I really think we need to change these cases just to build a, a better saw because it's going to have nothing but trouble with those bar studs. You know, they'll never, they'll, they're going to want to spin out when you try to take your nut off. But look, look at this. This is, this is nice stuff. All I got to do is find my flashlight that I got right here. Probably some days I, I'm glad I'm not looking for rattlesnakes or bears. I really am. But nice 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 cylinders just very very nice see how narrow that squish band is and you've heard me talk about i like a fairly narrow squish band it it makes a better running saw and uh some people think that's debatable but i don't care i know what works what don't these have a crown piston okay they're not flat. They're crowned. So these were reproduced properly. But I'll tell you something about this series of saw. Their timing numbers, as you notice, these saws did not turn up a lot of RPMs. But with the crankshaft and the bearings they have in these being just monstrously tough, they will turn. No, you can turn them. And, and safely. But one way they were held back, and we'll see it in the original ones, is them were tiny little windows. Now, sometimes when you see these repot parts, you can see that they were just saying, oh, you guys got to do something about this. So if we widen this, come down in about right in here, and get a better window in that piston, we can feed them upper transfers better. Okay. Because your air, as your piston comes down through in these saws, it builds case compression and comes out the windows in the piston. There is where your problem is. Every time, and all, even the 272 Husky, 268, all saws that have windows, be careful. You don't want to lose strength. But there's, there's always room for improvement. And in this case here, when we get done with this piston and do all the little go fast things we do, it'll make it last longer. Well, I don't know if it's, it's possible to make them last longer than these darn things. These dinosaurs run slow for a long time. 
They really did. Wonderful saws. They're getting the, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, guys, if you've been building the newer saws, as you take this thing apart, take good pictures. I grew up with these, so they're really no big deal to me. But you'll find them to be foreign. Me, I have problems with the new saws. I'm not. I'm not that guy. You know that. I, I'm kind of set my ways on what I like and what I don't like. And uh, once in a while, a saw will surprise me of these new saws. And I've got one here that did. So... We have to dig up the right set of cases that will accept this cylinder. And wouldn't it be neat if we could actually get lucky and find an OEM piston cylinder that was still perfectly serviceable? We might get lucky. I don't know. But I'll share changing the bearings, using these new bearings, and uh, what we do about it. Remember, the clutch bearing, clutch side bearing that I'm using is for... Uh, a Honda TRX 450 four-wheeler, okay? Isn't that amazing? We're putting a bearing out of a 450 in the, this uh, build, and it's right, and it's going to work. It's going to be fun. Okay, what I've got right here is a set of cases with a cylinder. I believe this is another of the old school, old 56 AVs, okay? And we might take two, three of these apart just to see what makes them uh, tech. Let, let's just take a look and see what, what cylinders fit what. This is what I'd like to know. Well, I know. Oh, I kind of know. But what do I have to work with? This is that. When you're working with these old saws, you keep in mind they were built a long time ago. And you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble with one little part, or you're going to notice that there's two ignitions. There's a Bosch and an SEM. You have to have the proper flywheel for the proper ignition. Either one, they interchange. If you have an SEM, you want to go to the Bosch, or that's what you got. Uh, by the way, Sawzilla has new ignitions for SEM. And Bosch and I, when we put this together, we'll show you how to install them properly. They run great. They're actually quite hot. And uh, the price point is perfect. Especially when you have some that's on, on titanium. Price point's awful good. And he sent me a couple and I used them and tried them. And I really happen to like them a lot. So, because we can get the bearings now and the pistons and the gaskets and everything we need... We can do proper builds on these. I've been avoiding them for the longest time because when you can't find only half the parts, and especially new parts, really, 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 really a bugger. And uh, oh, wow. You know, guys, this bottom end and this one's quite nice. It really is. Hopefully, I can find one that's got a bad bottom end and rebuild it for you. Uh, I've got a few of these around. So, let, let, let's say we use this set of cases and we opt to not do the bottom end because they're that good. What we're going to do is build a bottom end anyway for another saw. Okay? That's what we're going to do. And then we can see how this all works out. That way it covers all the bases for you. This is, this channel ain't expressed to you anymore. It's more about how to get these darn things back running and serviceable so we can actually use them. And uh, port them. You know, we don't want to kill them off. They're, they're old. But we want them to run... You see how that ran? It runs pretty good. Really good. Okay, this one is 54 millimeter already. Okay, here's the deal. So, we have a 54 millimeter top pen right here. This is what we got. Now, this one's been hurt already. It has. That's, uh, that's pretty obvious. We got a little bit of piston scoring. See that? 
Let me take an eyeball on my cylinder. Yeah, that uh, transferred right to the cylinder. It, uh, you need a little light, don't you? Okay, you kind of see what happened there. Okay. Now, Vernon, believe it or not, this is the one that we thought was a pretty good saw, the one with the black covers. We got a bottom end, but we don't have a piston cylinder. So we're going to use what we can get. I might be able to save this cylinder, okay? Um, I just might. They don't feel good, though. It really doesn't. Be a little nervous with that. But that this this wrist, this big end crank bearing is awfully nice in this saw. Uh, them berries are just as silky smooth as the day it was made. Okay, so we got something there. Now, so what we're going to have to do is I'm probably going to fairly much stop right there. Map this out. Get a wheel on it. I got to pull this flywheel. And uh, we'll map this out. And we'll see what we're dealing with. We'll get some numbers. I'll share the numbers it was. We'll go ahead and map it with this cylinder so we know what factory cylinder maps at, what our aftermarket Proline cylinder uh, numbers map at, compare notes, see what the differences are, and then decide what do we want to accomplish with the saw. What do we want it to be able to do? Do we want to increase the RPM some? I think yes, maybe a little. Uh, no big deal. We can do that. And uh, we're well on our way. Okay, there's a lot of oddities in nature, and there's oddities in size. This is uh, indeed an earlier AV uh, of 56. AV stands for all vibration. It's all there, every bit of it. Contrary to what you think, that's anti-vibration. It was all vibration. When you run these, you'll understand. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about this particular one, this isn't something you always see. Like I said, you can see anything in these old saws. You don't even know. If you noticed, the piston cylinder that we have for this, if we need to replace it, which looks like we're going to, had windows on the piston, and I pointed that out. Okay, I honestly didn't think this was an OEM piston, but it says Molly right on it. No windows. Okay, so how does that work? Okay, I'm going to tell you. It's narrow right here. So from here to here on the outside was wider. And you see inside how narrow that is where the rod goes. So what it did, it, you're only dealing with uh, two, three pounds of compression, seven, eight pounds. You know, it depends on your saw, you know, case volume and stroke. Bore, how much air it can displace underneath the cylinder. And if you'll notice, it's got these cutouts to capture the air. It comes up, hits that shelf, forces it up to transfers. Okay. Now, that had a limited value because it really pretty much stopped that saw from turning all of its RPMs it was capable of. Okay. Now, you have to remember something. Steel already knew they were going to build a 66 Magnum when they started with these saws. They did. But they knew they had 10 years of development work, approximately. And first they came out with the 064, and uh, was 52 millimeter bore, and then went to 54 millimeter for the 050, I mean, for the 66 Mag. Well, it wouldn't make sense to be able to when you have just as strong of a crank, actually stronger bearings than what uh, you get in a 66 mag, nobody would buy a 66 mag if one of these could outperform it. You let the cat out of the bag, did die, what you can expect. That's why I said, no, we can make it better. We're going to make it better. But we're not going to hurt the saw any. 
we're going to make it uh, just as reliable as it was ever designed to. It'll have some increase in cut RPMs. This is one thing we will do and make this a pleasure to run. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Those of you that ran these AVs know they did vibrate. Watch what happens to some of the vibration when, by altering port timing, we get a little nicer running saw and a, a little bit more tack involved. Uh, the vibration partially goes away. You're not going to cure it, these old, but these might just well had solid motor mounts, as far as I'm concerned. You're not going to cure that. Guys, it's nice to be back. You know, I've been bad sick. I'll talk in another video about what the journey has been it's was it pretty i'm better now i do tire out ec and i got my boy colin sitting here right beside me yep. he's been a big help i wouldn't have made it through this and get the stuff done that had to be done we're playing catch up around the old homestead i'll tell you that stuff that's normally done in spring just now is getting done and uh I occasionally still need a pretty good afternoon nap, but uh, not like it was. My sugar level's great. Heart rhythm's great. Pulse is in the 60s. I mean, I'm actually in good shape. Recovering. I've lost 42 pounds. Still got a long way to go. This wasn't the way I wanted to lose weight, okay? I didn't want to lose it this way, but thanks for being here. I especially want to thank all of the uh, super chatters and, and people that's, that's, that's helped us out. Believe it or not, some of them were quite significant. I will get to list the names off the computer, and I'm going to share. I won't share what, what they donated, but I have some very special uh, people out there. The super thanks is what I mean, that gave super thanks. And now that's not a plea for money. I don't even want your money. I want your friendship. I want you to keep watching this build. And I got a surprise saw for you in the next video. Goodbye. Six AV. Uh, it's actually my cousin Vern saw. He bought it, I believe, in 1980. It was used then, I think. And uh, they were a cut machine. Here's the deal. We're gonna make it better.